The Guam Department of Public Health and Social Services Breastfeeding Action Team will be celebrating World Breastfeeding Week 2021 from August 1st to August 7th. This year's theme is Protect Breastfeeding, a Shared Responsibility. Every day we will have some special advocates and professionals talk about, well, anything breastfeeding. Today's guests will talk about a few things families can do to help mamas in their breastfeeding journey. Let's welcome our special guest for day six of World Breastfeeding Week. Uh, good day and good morning. My name is Antoinette Kleiner and I am a mother of three grown children and three growing grandsons, um, ages nine and five-year-old twins, all of whom were successfully breastfed until they were over two years old. In fact, the twins fed um, from their mama until they were about three years old. Um, and I wanted to just talk to today about a few things that families can do to help support the mamas and the babies in their families as they go through their breastfeeding journey. So I have um, gosh, over 10 years experience as an IPCLC working in the hospital setting, providing lactation support to families um, as they come into the hospital and also in our outpatient setting. I'm also uh, a breastfed, breastfeeding mother who um, in my time did a combination of breastfeeding and formula feeding. And during my daughter's time was able to help support her in her journey. So that's where many of my lessons um, and tips for the families comes from. Um, the first thing I really want to support um, all families to do is just teach their children. Start them young, teach them that breastfeeding is normal and um, possible in their family. Um, so that the children, as they're growing up, they can see that this is the way we feed our babies and that it's a natural and normal thing. And that goes for both boys and girls. So my grandsons need to know that they are supposed to be okay with being babies breastfeeding, that that's where mama's milk comes from. And that when it's their turn to be fathers, that they get to support their wives and their women um, and their daughters in, in that journey. And for young girls, I want them to understand from the mothers, the aunties, the sisters um, in their families that this is how we do it. And it's not always pretty and it's not always easy, but we can do it and we can do it together. Um, the other thing that I have found super, super helpful in making uh, breastfeeding a successful and positive experience for families and for the mothers especially is to start early with skin to skin and to continue doing that throughout the first few weeks of baby's life, that truly helps establish not only that positive bond for all moms, whoever, um, whether, whether they're choosing to breastfeed, mix feed, or formula feed, but it also, for moms who are lactating, really helps establish that milk supply so that however long she gets to be home with her baby um, and establish that milk supply, it can be at the top of its game before she has to go on to other responsibilities. For grandparents, husbands, spouses, partners, um, I think it's super important then for us to make the most out of that time that we have mom home with baby. Um, and we can do a lot of different things. This is um, a shared responsibility in that we need to nurture the mama. If she's nurturing the baby, we need to make sure she's got good nutrition. She's got the water that she needs. She's got the time that she needs to sit down, put her feet up and just feed the baby and focus on that task. So helping uh, change diapers and helping rock and soothe the baby while she's finally taking a shower or finally taking a nap. Um, maybe helping do some, uh, not just helping, but making sure that the cooking is done and cleaning is done so she doesn't have to worry about those things all the time. This is definitely a shared thing that all households should do and have done over history. You know, women raise their children together. So when one mama was sick, then another mama in the household or in the family was able to help pick up the, the slack, um, so to speak. But we raised our children together. And I think for the family members, we can all establish our own bonding with our babies by doing some sort of modified skin to skin, whether that's rocking and holding your children while mama's taking her nap, 
Um, or for me and for my grandsons, it was actually a modified skin to skin. So I would hold them as little tiny babies right there on my neck. Um, and as they grew, that became grandma's neck. So grandma kissed them right there on their neck. And they, as you know, little toddlers and even now as little school-aged boys, they know, oh, grandma, where's your neck? So we, we share that time. And I think that families can find that themselves. Um, daddies can find that their bond with their baby is, is different than when they're, when mama's doing skin to skin, baby knows that, oh, I have mama and I also have the access to milk. When daddies do skin to skin, oh, I have daddy, baby will learn and daddy will rock me and daddy will talk to me and daddy will protect me. And I can feel his his energy and his strength and babies will learn that change and that different um, relationship with their daddies and, and be able to differentiate that. Um, but we have to allow dads to understand that that's normal and it's touching and it's helpful to them as well. Um, and then the last thing I think that's super, super important is that we need to help families, help mamas really succeed at being a breastfeeding mama and doing everything else. So many mamas that I have known actually are working inside the home, outside the home, a combination of all, maybe they're raising five other children in that house and we need to share that responsibility. It cannot only be about one person doing all of that work. So um, when mama is uh, working outside of the house or she's needing some time to do other things, I think that we as family can support her by agreeing to breast, uh, agreeing to feed the breast milk. I've run into a number of family caretakers of the baby who mama goes off to work, but they refuse to touch and handle her breast milk. Yet they'll handle the formula and be happy with that. Um, and I think we need to take away that kind of misunderstanding and um, misidentification of handling breast milk. It is not a toxic substance. It is not a biohazardous substance. This is the milk that mother is providing for her child. And so we as, as grandparents or aunties or caregivers need to accept that responsibility and learn how to prepare and handle that breast milk fine. We can also help support mamas who are working by doing a variety of things. For some families, that means feeding the breast milk in a bottle and storing it. For some families, that means saving a feeding so that when mom comes home after her day at work, that baby's ready and hungry and, and wanting her. That will help her um, continue to maintain her, her milk supply. Um, and for some families, it means taking the baby down to mommy. So for me, I, with my first, when she had to go to work and baby wouldn't take the bottle of breast milk and he wouldn't take a bottle of anything, we just packed up in the car and I took him down to her work and she found a dressing room nearby or, a, you know, someplace private where she could nurse her baby and, and that helped keep them going. Um, I think that we can also help support families by helping them get access to pumps if that's what they need, um, helping them make sure that they're protected with the laws, whether it's at work or out in public, and providing that shield from people who want to, um, you know, make judgments about mamas who are breastfeeding in public. We, even though we have these wonderful laws, sometimes it comes down to families building a wall in front of her and letting her feed her baby with whatever privacy that she needs to have in order to feel protected and to do that with the most sincere um, heart about it. You know, this is, this is my mother that I'm, that's behind me and you're not allowed to judge her. So um, I think that families really need to help step up uh, in doing that for our mamas, not just chewing them, off to a side and saying, we're gonna hide it away from everybody. If that's where mom needs to be and baby needs to eat and she feels comfortable, then we as family then also need to be comfortable with taking that fight out there. Um, so I really wanna encourage everybody to continue these things and help these lessons come back. It used to be that these lessons were just in eight. You know, we grew up seeing it and we just knew it and we didn't have any other options. But I think that over, you know, several generations now, we've gotten away from those lessons. And so 
women don't know that their families do support their, their decisions. Maybe that's just not a topic to talk about. And so I think that conversation needs to be had. And we as family members need to take that responsibility to have that, not just wait for mama to ask us, hey, mom, what do you think about me breastfeeding my baby? I don't just say, hey, my daughter, my niece, my granddaughter, I want you to breastfeed your baby because that's my baby too. And I want to make sure that both of you are happy and healthy and able to do it with as much happiness in your hearts about it. Um, so I think that we as family really need to and can provide a different level of support that hand in hand with all of these other levels we've been hearing about all week will help women be more successful um, in their journey. And hopefully we'll find our ways back to breastfeeding being the predominant feeding choice and path of families as in the future. So be the breastfeeding week and thank you for listening.